once again. Hello everyone, it's such a blessing to be back with you once again. And today we are going to be studying about the wood and specifically what type of wood was used to make the wilderness sanctuary. And we will be discussing about the walls and the floors of the sanctuary, the type of wood that was used to make them with. And we're also going to discover what, and what this tree symbolizes and also how it represents the humanity of Jesus and the spiritual significance of us for Christians. But before we continue in our Bible study today, we're going to have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day as we're going to continue this sanctuary Bible study and as we're going to learn about what type of wood was used to build the sanctuary. May it be of us and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we were talking, mentioning, we're going to continue our study on the sanctuary and we're going to be studying specifically about the type of wood and the tree that was used for the wood to make the wilderness sanctuary. Now Hannah I'd like to ask you a question. Yes daddy? What type of wood was used to make the sanctuary? Before you answer that question, though, I'd like for you to read for us Exodus chapter 26, verses 15 and 19, okay? Okay. In Jesus' name, and thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle of Shittim wood, standing up. Okay, so what did the Bible say that the type of wood was used for making the sanctuary with? Shittim wood. Shittim wood. Now what's interesting about Shittim wood is this tree was found specifically in the arid regions of the Sinai Peninsula. And it was very durable and it was able to withstand the elements of the weather like rain, extreme heat, freezing cold temperatures, and it had a very good strong durability. Also, what's very amazing about Shedden Wood is it's actually very hard, too. Yes, it is a very strong, hard, sturdy wood. And it was also resistant to termites and other type of insects and pests, too, as well. And so this is why God told Moses to use Shittim or Acacia Wood for the building and the construction of the apartments of the wilderness sanctuary. So it tells us that it was made from shittim wood, right Hannah? Yes. So Hannah, would you please explain to our friends what the significance of the word made means? The word made means that it was made in the likeness of someone or something. So here we see that God is trying to help us to see that Jesus came and was made in our likeness and born with our human nature. Now how do we know this for a fact, friends and Hannah? So we're going to turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And we're going to notice a very interesting a significant prophecy that Isaiah gives to us concerning our blessed Savior and soon coming King Jesus. And this is going to help us to better understand why the acacia or shittim wood was used to make the wilderness sanctuary wood because remember everything, all the materials down to the slightest detail was symbolic of Jesus in one way or another and his ministry in behalf of fallen humanity. Now, notice what Isaiah tells us here in chapter 9, verse 6. It says, 
In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, and a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. But the most important thing that it tells us here, it says that unto us a child is given. When Jesus laid aside Hannah, his divinity and friends, and took upon himself humanity combined with divinity, the Bible tells us that he was to be one with the human race forever. And that's why that word made is so significant. Because Jesus came and the exact likeness was made and fashioned like one of us, subject to the same weaknesses, failures, mistakes, temptations, struggles, and everything just like we face in life. And so he knows what we're facing and he knows what we're going through. And we have a very compassionate, loving Savior who knows how to help those that are being tempted and tried by the enemy. Isn't that a wonderful thought, Hannah? Yes. Amen. So now, Hannah, go ahead and read for us Exodus chapter 26, verse 19. Okay. And thou shalt make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenions, and two sockets under another board for his two tenions. So, Hannah... We also see another interesting thing here in verse 19, don't we? Yes. What type of precious metal does it say was used for the sockets and tenons of the boards to go into? Silver. That's right, silver. Now, what does silver represent in the Bible? It represents redemption. That's right, it represents redemption. And... This reminds us that silver was redemption money. It represented the price whereby we were to be redeemed. And who was it that came to redeem us on the cross from our sins? Jesus. Jesus. Now here's a very amazing fact too, friends. You know, the wilderness sanctuary had silver in it. But you know when we read in the book of Revelation, the New Testament, Hannah and Friends, and it talks about all the various beautiful gems and jewels that's made up of the foundations of the walls, and it talks about the gold and the pearly gates and all that. Does it say anything about silver, though, there? No. You wonder why that is? Yes. The reason being is because those that are found in the New Jerusalem are the redeemed from this earth because they've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus and they surrender their lives in this lifetime to Jesus allowing them to gain the victory with the struggle and sin in their lives and therefore in the earth made new there's no need for Jesus to die on the cross again to redeem us from our sins because He's already died once for the redemption of the whole entire human race. And he wants us to surrender to him on a moment-by-moment -moment basis each day that he may help us by the Holy Spirit to gain the victory over the sin that we struggle with in our lives. And we can gain that victory through Jesus and him alone. Now, without Jesus, we cannot, but with Jesus, we can. That's great news, isn't it, Hannah and friends? Yes. Yes, it is. Hannah, I would like to ask you another question. Yes, Daddy? What was the Shittim wood overlaid with? But well, before we answer that question, Hannah, I'd like for you to read for us Exodus chapter 26, verse 29, all right? Okay. In Jesus' name. And thou shalt overlay the boards with gold, and make their rings of gold for places for the bars. And thou shalt overlay the bars with gold. Oh, wow. So what precious metal does it tell us that the Shittim one was overlaid with? Gold! Gold, yes. 
And what does gold represent? The divinity and perfection of Christ. That's right. It represents the divinity and the perfection of Christ. And it also represents Christ's perfect character and His righteousness that He desires to clothe us with and to take away the filthy rags of our righteousness and clothe us with the spotless, pure robe of His righteousness. You know, another interesting fact, friends and Hannah, about the Shittim wood is in the Hebrew Dictionary, the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, it tells us that it also means scourging thorns to pierce or to flog or to whip. Wow, that must have been very bad. Yeah. And this also is another way that the Shittim one represents Jesus because what happened to Jesus? He had a what placed upon his brow? A crown of thorns. That's right. A crown of thorns is what they placed upon Jesus' head or his brow. And what did the leaders encourage Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to do to Jesus? They whipped him with the whip. That's right. They whipped him with the whip. And they scourged him. And... He suffered and endured all that for us. So we see here that this Shittim wood represents the humanity of Jesus and his life. And it tells us also, friends, that this wood also represents our humanity. Because you know in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, it says, be careful what we lay upon this foundation because every person's work will be tried as if a fire. And if we lay upon it hay, wood, and stubble, that it will be consumed by the flames. So whatever we do in this life, we don't want to do it in our own power and strength. We want to allow Jesus to help us to do whatever he calls us to do. So that whatever we do, we'll be able to withstand the, tri the fiery trials of persecution so that it's not burned up by the flames. Isn't that right, Hannah? Yes! That's right, it is. And another interesting thing, too, is that just as these boards were used to build the sanctuary... It also reminds us that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. And that as we surrender to Jesus, He is polishing us. He's getting rid of the scourges, the goads, the thorns of our old fallen nature and smoothing it out and making us a beautiful polished stone fit for the similitude of a palace to be lively stones as Peter talks about in his letters of the spiritual temple that God is building us up to be for his to be for his dwelling place in this life and throughout throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. And so, so I have a final question for you, Hannah. Yes, Daddy. What was the wilderness sanctuary a type of? The sanctuary in the wilderness was a type of the Christian church. That's right. And where do we read that from? It's from Signs of the Times, February 14, 1900. That's right. So we see here also that the Lord's Messenger, Ellen White, tells us that the wilderness sanctuary here that we've been studying about was a type of the Christian church. And the reason why she refers to it as that is, remember, in the Psalms chapter 77, 13, it says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is such a great God as like unto our God? And so, throughout this entire study and throughout this series, we're learning how we can come back into a genuine, solid relationship with Jesus. Is that your desire, Hannah, to yeah. have a 
firm, solid relationship with Jesus? Yes. That's my desire too. And we hope that that is your desire as well too. As we close our Bible study today, we can see that this study today shows us the wood used for the wilderness sanctuary teaches us that when Jesus took upon himself our humanity, he was to retain it forever, as we read there in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. So what this means, friends and Hannah, is that Jesus set aside his omnipresence. Now, omnipresence means to be present everywhere at the same time. But since Jesus was born with our human nature and now is back in heaven with a glorified human body, he cannot himself be everywhere, present everywhere at the same time. But he has an aid through which he is present everywhere simultaneously with his people throughout the whole world. So who is the third person of the Godhead, Hannah? The Holy Spirit. That's right, the Holy Spirit. And we learn also from this study that it's through the Holy Spirit that Jesus is able still to be present with his people everywhere at the same time by the Holy Spirit. And we see also that God wants to make us a new creation in Christ. Didn't we learn that today? Yes. And that is our Heavenly Father's will for us. And we hope and pray, friends, that you will allow Jesus, if you have not done so yet, that you will do that today to allow Jesus to begin to make you a new creation in Him. Is that your desire, Hannah? Yes. That's my desire, too. So in our next study, we're going to begin to take a look at the furniture in the first apartment of the Wilderness Sanctuary. This part of the Wilderness That's Sanctuary. That's right. Because the Wilderness Sanctuary is made up of two apartments. You have the Holy Place and the Most Holy Place. That's right, Anna. The Holy Place and the Most Holy Place. In our next study, that's what we'll be talking about. And we hope you'll be able to join us again. So let us close with prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this wonderful study that we're able to do on the sanctuary. Lord, we want to thank you for all your many blessings and for all the wonderful things that you've been teaching us throughout this study on the sanctuary and how you're desiring to bring each and every one of us back into a genuine relationship with you. We pray that you'll be with all of our friends and that you'll bless them in their week and draw them near and still nearer to your side. And if any have not made the decision to surrender to Jesus yet, we pray that they'll make that decision today. And we pray that you'll continue to bless these studies, to use them to reach many children, parents, and adults throughout the world. We ask this and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hope to see you on our next study. Bye-bye, everyone. God bless you till we meet again next time.